We've already filled up the table and we're gonna need more room. Okay. Hey everybody. Hi artists. How's it going today? Welcome back. It is yet another episode on this channel. Now you voted for it. You wanted it on the community tab. You told me I want to see a colored pencil collection. Now the runner up to that vote, that poll, was my watercolor collection so uh that will come soon and as well the gouache as well so because we kind of have to spice things up a little bit and switch things up a little bit around here sometimes it's just nice to have a just a big good show and tell so that's what we got right here i used to have an enormous amount of colored pencils and from what you saw it still looks like i do but i've actually downsized quite a bit because here's the thing I'm not a full-time colored pencil artist, not anymore, because I have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and psoriatic arthritis. There's a whole vlog on that if you want to see the whole story behind it. But long story short, I have a lot of chronic pain, and as you know, colored pencil can be a very, very slow medium. So with that being said, I just, I had to like weed out the things that were unnecessary and keep the things that are still necessary, which is still a lot. So here we go. I'm going to take you on the journey with me. I hope that you enjoy this video. And if you aren't, please subscribe for more art related content. Hit the like button if you enjoy this video at the end and I will see you then. Okay. Bye bye for now. Hey, happy spring. Got my spring manicure going on. <laughs> oh guys, I'm so excited to show you all this. Um, I want to let you know, as a caveat, first and foremost, there are some sets that I haven't even touched yet, and it's not that I don't enjoy them, it's not that um, I don't want to do anything with them, it's just that there are so many different types of mediums that I use on this channel that they've kind of been put to the back burner, and I do plan to use them so I can review them, so I can see what they're like for you and for myself, so just bear in mind that there are some in there that have not, either have not been used yet or I haven't used in a while, but um, I will say that I absolutely love pencils, period. I just wish that they didn't make me flare up <laughs> after a while. Okay, let's just get to it. First, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Um, I do have, a bunch of Crayola pencils that I bought just I don't know I just thought well why not you know and then I picked these up at a thrift store and yeah I think it was 250 I also got the colors of the world I haven't used these yet but if you want me to do um, a review or just kind of like a first impressions let me know and I will do that for you we're going to be discussing a classic you know it I know it we love it here it is Polychromos. You cannot go wrong with polychromos, I tell you. Just beautiful colors, lots of good skin tones too, but also like lots of bright blues and greens and like the turquoise colors. You know I love turquoise. Beautiful selection of colors. And I love that I can get them open stock so I don't have to just buy a whole new set. And yeah, they're, they're fantastic. And they're a wonderful oil-based pencil that you can layer and just create the most beautiful realistic effects if that's what you're going for. But just in general, it's just a great pencil. And I feel like if I had to choose one pencil to have for the rest of my life, um, the first would be Holbein. <laughs> because <laughs> you all know I love it. But if Holbein didn't exist, Polychromos would be that pencil. I, I truly, truly believe that. It's such a beautiful, wonderful pencil. This was just Frank the Bunny from Donnie Darko. That was completely in Polychromos. And that's whenever I really fell in love with them because I could get that, that very natural look with the, the fur. And uh, I just, I really loved the lay down and everything in the user experience. And then of course, this is a larger print of Maleficent that I did several years ago, mostly Polychromos on this one, I believe, and some Pablo on the sharp details. So following up with that, we have Karin Dash Pablo, one of my absolute favorites. The thing is though, is that I just don't use them as much as I used to, and I'm debating on whether or not I will sell them and get something different, or if I'll keep them and in my collection. They actually are kind of, um, well, they're kind of a supplemental pencil towards uh, polychromos because these are skinnier and you can sharpen them to a very fine point. Absolutely gorgeous colors in the selection. Uh, I don't have the original anymore, but this is Gerard Way and you can tell like <laughs> there was a lot of details here and I was really able to achieve that beautiful 
realistic effect with both of those pencils. And I actually, I think I used some Lyra Polycolor, which I don't have anymore. And, and it was just a, a mixture of different pencils here, but mostly kind of the Polychromos and Pablo. However, I wish that they had a few, like a little bit more variety of skin tones. I tend to gravitate towards um, whenever it comes to really getting a detailed piece, I gravitate towards the Polychromos for that if I'm going for oil-based. And these are wax-based, but to be honest, there's wax and oil in all pencils. It just depends on uh, the percentage in both. So I've got a few that I need to have replaced, <laughs> but they do have some interesting colors like um, mouse gray here. And they're, I mean, they do have some very, very unique colors in here. So I may just go ahead and hold on to it. I'm kind of <laughs> debating between getting luminance again and, or Derwent Light Fast, because I do have a 12 tin of the Derwent Light Fast and they are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and vibrant. And you can tell that they last a long time. So there we go. There is Karin Dash Pablo. Yay. <laughs> I also wanted to show you some of the work that I've done with the Polychromos and the Pablo. What I love is that with Pablo, I can get these very sharp details like in this one right here. I used mo mainly Polychromos in the background and in some of the general colors, but I really went kind of hog wild with Pablo in this one with the details in the spider web and the spider. And it was just a fantastic kind of marriage between Polychromos and Pablo. And also in this, and this is not my favorite piece. I really didn't think I did very well with a lot of this. I would have done it differently if I could do it over. But it was very nice to kind of get in those details with the ladybug and the Pablo. And I did use Pablo in some of these sharper details here. This is also, also kind of a marriage between Polychromos and Pablo. Let's talk about this beautiful, gorgeous set from Derwent. I feel like Colorsoft are the underdogs of the colored pencil world and they need more love and deserve more than what they get because I tell you what, these pencils, they're so vibrant and soft, but not, uh, they're velvety soft, but they're not, I don't get a lot of breakage from them. So they're, they're soft, but not weak. They're opaque, which I really love. You can get a lot of coverage. They've got these gorgeous colors like electric blue, some beautiful purples, bright purple, and, and they still have some skin tones in here, light and deeper tones as well. They've got a nice balanced array of colors, I feel like. So this is a print because the original is, um, I believe I sold it. I don't know. I'll have to go look. <laughs> it's been a while, but I did use Colorsoft for her portrait here because I wanted to use black paper and they're so opaque that I was able to just get a couple of layers on and that was all I needed. And um, of course this right here was gold ink and everything, but her skin tones, it turned out beautiful. I feel like you can use these for realism, but you can also, if you notice, I, I actually cross hatched here. If you remember in the brush marker video of Art and Fly, the booster pack, I used Colorsoft on top of it, and it really kind of brought things together with her hands and her face and everything. So they, that's probably one of their greatest strengths is that it's not only opaque, but they don't leave your hands fatigued. And that's a huge thing for me. Because for those of you who have arthritis, this would be a great set in, in terms of that. But I feel like these are a fantastic pencil range. I wish there was a 120 of them. I really do. I would buy them. I actually do have some swatches and I really need to organize and re-swatch a lot of colored pencils so that I have everything that um, all like in one binder or one place, I don't know. But I used to actually swatch everything and put them on a book ring. And that's nice everything, but I actually kind of like the idea of having a full sheet or a binder or just one particular place where I can just kind of flip through and look at all of these swatches. So here we have the swatches for the Derwent. You can definitely tell that they are very, very solid as, as an opaque, like I said, and they're very bright too. They're probably some of the brightest pencils that I have, but you can see that they not only have bright colors, but they have a good selection of 
earth tones. And they've got some skin tones in there too. So you can use the earth tones for deeper skin tones. And then they have some um, like soft pink and blush pink. But colors like electric blue, like I showed you, they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Pale blue, purple. I could just go on. <laughs> Pale mint. I love that one. I don't think I've ever had any trouble with breakage with these pencils. So there you go. I adore them. They're wonderful. I wish they had a 120 set. <laughs> Speaking of Derwent, I will be using these. I just got these in the mail. Lindsay the Frugal Crafter was kind enough to send me a set. And so I'm going to just kind of work with these and see how I like them. I've kind of swatched a couple of them last night. Very vibrant, very beautiful. So far, so good. So expect a review very soon on these. So I can't really say too much about them right now. So there you have it. They are in my collection though. Let's see, what do I want to do next? <laughs> but you know what time it is. You know, you know, it's Holbein time. Oh my goodness. I mean, I could just go on and on about these pencils. I will forever love these pencils. I know some people have criticized me because I haven't used them that much. But the thing is, is that I will be using them more because they are now sold on Blick and they are available in the U.S. So if you are wondering if you can get a, a set of these, you could definitely get a set on Blick.com and they have open sock. So look forward to seeing more involvement with these, but good gracious, look at these pastels. This is what sets them apart. I mean, one of the things that set them apart above all pencils, in my opinion, is that they have these gorgeous just a gorgeous set of colors in general, but the strength, one of the strengths is that they have these beautiful pastels. I mean, you cannot resist looking at these and adoring them in my opinion, but they also have fantastic neons that are very, very opaque. What I love about these pencils is that really it's a sensory experience because the lay down is absolutely fabulous. It feels different than other pencils. Um, they are kind of Kind of a nice mix between hard and soft, but they're very, ooh, they just feel so velvety. You wanna, <laughs> and they're very pleasing to work with. They really are. And I love them because I can get many layers down before I even have to blend them. They kind of almost blend into themselves before you even go and burnish or I like to use odorless mineral spirits with them. They work beautifully with odorless mineral spirits. They are truly, truly a unique colored pencil selection, you know, and, and Holbein, they go above and beyond with their products. They really do. I feel like they really care about what they're putting out. They really don't ever have anything that is student grade or academic level. Everything is very catered to the artist, the fine artist, the professional artist, and the practicing artist. So also, I know that I have said in the past, whenever I first came onto YouTube, and I said I wouldn't use these for coloring books, I just mentioned this in my last video, you could use them for coloring books. My personal, my personal needs, I wouldn't use them for coloring books. I really don't color that much in coloring books. But if you are a colorist and you want a fabulous, fine quality pencil to use in your coloring books, go for it. It's just that previously these things were very precious to me and I didn't want to put them in my coloring books or anything like that. So I use them for fine art pieces and I'm so happy that they are available now in the US. So they are in my favorite case right here. And I would, I would never let these go. <laughs> these are, these are my number one desert island pencils. And there you have it. You've seen me work with these before on my channel. This is my most recent piece. Whenever they released um, their pencils in the U.S., I will put links in the description box below for some of my earlier videos. I kind of need to do an update on tips and tricks and fun stuff and demos with the, the Holbein pencil. So the, just keep in mind whenever you watch it that they are kind of outdated and lower quality videos. So there you go. Let's discuss a little controversial colored pencil here in the form of Artisan pencils. Yes, these are the dry colored pencils. They're 120 set. 
I haven't really played with them that much. I do reach for them every now and again, and I do love their selection. Like they have these kind of unique names like Robin's Egg Blue, Ocean Blue. I mean, that's not really unique, but beautiful selection of colors. I really do feel like it's a well-rounded selection of colors. Uh, I do remember reaching for them and using them. I used it formerly in a video about Artist Loft Pen Blender and Colored Pencil Pen Blender and I used mostly Artiza and I used some Prismacolor with this. Yes, I said Prismacolor. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I remember really loving the laydown and I actually liked it better than Prismacolor in terms of laydown. Uh, very vibrant colors. I could get several layers out of them. They are wax-based, so um, you don't get as many layers, of course, with wax-based pencils or heavier wax-based pencils, I should say. But they always lay down pretty well. And I they're a little bit harder than Prismacolor, but they have that same kind of creamy laydown to them. So I did enjoy them. Uh, I just haven't used them that much. And I, I do like them, but I just, I guess when you have Holbein and you have these other brands that are so much better, I'd say that. I'm sorry, Artisa. But, you know, whenever you have something that you really are drawn towards, you know, you kind of you get these other brands and you like them, but you don't use them that much. It doesn't mean that you don't like them. So, you know, it is what it is. And I plan to use them in the future and they do have pretty good light, fast readings. However, that's pretty relative, especially when it comes to more affordable color pencil brands. Also, I cleaned the pen blender on the side of this paper. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh boy, look at this honking thing. I love this thing. It holds 300 pencils. <laughs> and I love the design. It's so pretty. So let's talk. Let's talk. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Prismacolor. Okay, guess what? You will probably be surprised to know that I do actually have the newer Prismacolors. Yes, I went out. I didn't go out. I actually bought them. I believe not this last Christmas, but the Christmas before last. I have not used them that much. In fact, I would like to do a video and see if I still, <laughs> that I, you know, I'd like to see if they're still as bad as I remember towards the end. I did break up with these several years ago and put a video out on YouTube, probably one of my most popular videos. It's not the best video. I'm rambling, but in short, I found it. The Prismacolors had decreased in quality via breakage, quality control, misaligned leads, etc., etc. Some of the common problems and complaints that a lot of artists have with the newer Prismacolors. So maybe that will come in the future. I've thought about it for a long time. So this particular case holds my newer Prismacolors and my fantastic old Prismacolors. These are classic. They are vintage. I love them. I got them from a lot of on, um, I found it on Craigslist. A local man who was an architect was getting rid of a lot of drafting materials and a lot of uh, art supplies that he used. And so I got this big bag of old Prismacolors. Some of them are the old barrel Prismacolor and some of them go as far back as to be the Eagle Prismacolors. Now, Eagle was first. Eagle had the name Prismacolor first, sold it out to Barrel. Barrel sold it to Sanford, and Sanford is now uh, the brand that Prismacolor comes from. And um, apparently Sanford is affiliated with a Rubbermaid <laughs> brand, which I guess they're all under the umbrella, same umbrella, so that's interesting. These are probably, the, you know, they used to be the artist standard. That's the thing. I used to use them way back in the day. I discovered that I fell in love with colored pencil whenever I was about 18 and I took a class at a community college. I was in art school. I was majoring in art. And let me show you something. This is a very old, very large piece of artwork that I still have saved from my beginning art classes. And so the moment that I fell in love with Prismacolor was whenever I was uh, rendering Tori Amos's face. Now, these little black specks are thanks to my son whenever he was little and he was a very um, aggressive painter, let's put it that way. I'm not really that upset about it, but I was using the purple colors to color in her lipstick and I remember the moment that I blended them with a colorless blender, I was just shocked. I was instantly in love with colored pencils. That was it. That's what sold me. And at that time, Prismacolor was really 
the only thing that you know was available in art schools they didn't have polychromos in art schools as 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 far as i remember and some of the other artists that i've spoken to since then as you know they have declined in quality but i'm going to probably create a video about it and and see what we can do maybe you have a versus like the old prismacolor versus the new i don't know we'll figure it out but i do love these and my history with prismacolor these are some of my past favorite Prismacolor pieces that I've done. This was actually mixed with a little bit of light, I think pink acrylic paint in here and some of the Tombow markers, but uh, to achieve the effects that I wanted. And I'm kind of looking over this and seeing things I could have done better, but <laughs> this wasn't originally, this is a print, but originally this particular piece was 18 by 24. Lots of detail. And that was whenever I kind of had a falling out with Prismacolor because I had so much breakage with the aqua, aquamarine and I was like, this is unnecessary. So after that, I really stopped using Prismacolor and that was in 2016. All right, let's talk about these. I tell you what, these are such beautiful pencils and I did a review on these. I recently did a drawing of my eyes, which you will see. And here's the thing, this company provides very well crafted products at a very affordable price and these have a fast fantastic array of colors these are technically oil based colors they do not have names on them which i mean that's okay not on the body but they do have the names listed up here so here are the swatches a very well balanced collection of pencils and they have quite a variety. I do wish they had a little bit more. I do say that they're well balanced, but they do need a few more earth tones in my opinion, in my humble opinion. So here's the thing. If I were actually um, just beginning with colored pencils and I needed a good high quality pencil that was technically oil based, I would recommend this on because a lot of people are on a budget and that's understandable. So these are only $30 on Amazon currently right now. Now, of course, that's subject to, you know, increase or decrease. I think it's a fantastic <laughs> set for the money, especially a good, great value. I enjoyed using them. They didn't give me any trouble really. And I just, I think it's a, a wonderful set for just about any level of artist. That's the thing about Art and Fly is that, you know, they have beginner friendly pencils and markers, but the seasoned artist will enjoy them as well. In addition, I have spoken with someone at the company and I do believe, I cannot confirm completely, but I do believe they are going to expand their colored pencil line. So hopefully we'll get a 120 in there, uh, maybe some new colors and we'll see what they come up with. I am always excited to see what their new art supplies are because they really do make wonderful products at a great price in my opinion, especially these pencils and their markers. Their markers are fantastic for the price. All right, folks, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The Pilot Eno mechanical colored pencils are some of the most unique pencils that I have. And I didn't know whether to put them in this category or not because they're technically mechanical pencils, but they are colored pencils technically too. So let's just go ahead and take a look at them. They create these amazing kind of luminous effects whenever you use them real softly and then you kind of go back over them and use them um, to kind of layer. My favorite colors are these two right here as a pair and I'll show you some examples too. And then I also love this color right here. It's a gold, it looks like orange, but it's more of a, um, a yellow gold color. And then um, the orange is pretty too as well. And what I like about them too is that you can buy refills for them on Amazon. And these are relatively inexpensive. I think I bought the whole set for $12. And really they're just fun to work with. I actually love them so much that somehow I managed to kind of break off the ends of this one. I don't know what happened. So um, you can, I don't have any examples with like the red or anything like that. It's just mostly I end up using those two, the soft blue and the blue. They do work better on kind of like the mixed media paper by Canson or like heavier paper because some of my two favorite sketches I was drawing these goddesses with those pencils, right? And this is, hmm. 
I just, I don't know what it was with me, but I went through a stage where I really liked the Blick sketch paper. And so, as you can see, they kind of have yellowed. If you can compare them to the Canson XL, it seems like they have. I don't know if they've always been this, this sort of off-white color, but this one has seriously faded, and I worked on that for quite a while, so I'm a little disappointed in how it looks on the sketch paper. But that just goes to show you guys that paper has a lot to do with how your pencils perform and how your art supplies perform. And then this is... Um, this is something that I drew after being in deep meditation for like 40 minutes or so or an hour and I thought that since those two colors are very ethereal looking together that would be perfect so there you go I really love pilot you know mechanical color pencils get your hands on them if you can collect some refills I also have these. These are the Lyra Skin Tone Giants. I use them also. I said that Lyra was used in that Gerard Way portrait. Um, it was used. These were used as well on some of the larger portions. That um, These are great for if you do have hand fatigue and you're doing a portrait and you just want to lay down some color and you don't want to spend hours doing it. You want to kind of, you know, speed up on production time. It's great. And also what I really, really like about these is that they not only have warm skin tones, they have these kind of cooler toned shadows shadowy colors. That's really important. I, I feel like sometimes uh, cooler skin tone undertones really kind of get overlooked in portrait sets. So let's talk about the uh, the wonderful drawing set of 24. It's kind of a special C set by Derwent. I have had this for a very long time and haven't used them in a long time. But let me tell you what, these pencils, they're absolutely perfect if you're looking to draw animals and their fur and obviously they sport some artwork from an artist who is into drawing and depicting fur and to me fur is a very it's kind of difficult to render in in my experience i mean if you're doing it full time then of course you probably have more practice and it's not as difficult for you but this is a wonderful kind of earth tone collection but if you think about it it's also i feel like a great skin tone collection there's this lovely ink blue and i know it's not necessarily a traditional skin tone whenever you think of skin tones but if you think about like the dark cool shadows wonderful wonderful and then of course we have the, these wonderful mid-tones we have sanguine which is kind of a very common sketching pencil and i am missing the chinese white but i swear the derwent chinese white and their white pencils are worth their weight in gold because if you want a true opaque white these are the pencils to use i guess you could get them open stock if you find them online on blick or if you can find it in the color soft open soft open stock open soft open stock in your area at a local art supply store but uh yes keep that in mind the chinese white if you've got flimsy white pencils and colored pencils that is the pencil to get 100 percent. i i really i don't use these as often as maybe i should but when I use them, I enjoy them, and that's kind of the point, right? Speaking of portrait sets, we have the Koinor 24. I have been a faithful Koinor user since I discovered them, so even though they're not my main favorites, they are a wonderful alternative, I guess, to polychromos, even though there are some downfalls. They don't have any light fast ratings that I can find. I tried looking on their website a long time ago, so if anyone has this information, please let me know. I would love to know if they have any light fast information. So, I mean, for those of you who are creating finished artwork, putting it behind glass, uh, possibly in the sun, this may not be a good option for you. But if you are an artist, a practicing artist who loves to do portraits and maybe you don't have the budget for polychromos, this has kind of the same feel as a poly polychromos. It's an oil based pencil. Um, it is harder, so it kind of has that polychromos feel to it. It's very similar in, in my experience in using them. I was very, very surprised. And I, I did do a video on them a long time ago, which I will link in the description and maybe put in the card too. So these are some special sets of skin tones that I have actually, I ordered these, uh, I wanna say over Christmas, and I still haven't gotten to using them. I mean, I haven't even touched them. One is for light skin tones, one's for deeper skin tones, but honestly, whenever I look at them, they look very, very similar. It's just that the dark skin tones have a couple more darker tones in them. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a little bit different, yeah. There's not any fair skin tones here. I might feel differently about them whenever I use them, but I do like 
the idea of woodless colored pencils and woodless watercolor pencils because you get nothing but pigment. There's no wood or anything like that. So you get more bang for your buck in a way. I'm hoping to get around to these pretty soon because they look promising. And I got them on Amazon. They were fairly inexpensive. I think these were, I got these on sale for eight bucks each, but I think normally they're 12. Oh, friends. Oh, dear. <laughs> I had filmed the rest of my collection, imported it into Final Cut Pro, and it has been a hell of a ride trying to resolve the issue. So I will go into the nerdy tech side of the issues, but there will have to be a part two of my collection. But the good news is, is that I have new pencils since I filmed this, so I will be including those. So just wanted to inform you instead of having this abruptly cut off and have it just be awkward. So stay tuned for part two. So, so. That was fun. <laughs> what did you think of my collection? Do you think it's basic? Do you think it's too much? Do you think it's not enough? I would love to know in your comments below. Uh, really, long story short, you know, I just love all of the major colored pencil brands. They usually have something that brings something to my arsenal. And so I kind of like to experiment with the brands that are artist grade. Now it's very, very tough because a lot of colored pencils that are on the market that you find, especially on Amazon, kind of boasts that artist professional grade formula, but they're not really. But that's a whole other video for a whole other day. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have a certain brand or type of pencil that you would like for me to check out and review, leave it in the comments below as well. I love you guys. Thank you for voting for this. I enjoyed filming it and I'll see you guys next time. So keep creating. I have cat hair on this. Goodness. I love it. You love them the polychromos. I have opened this up the wrong way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Following up to that are the Karin Dash Pablo. I still opened this up wrong. In a former video where I discussed a, um, oh, what was it? This is my favorite is the Luchador pencil case. And it keeps all my beautiful Holbein pencils in them. Some of the most unique pencils that are colored that I have colored pencils. Oh my god, I've just blah 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 blah. Okay. Let's get it together. Let's get it together. So you think and I guess I'll see you later guys. You know, I've got lots to do and I've got pretty plenty more videos to follow up with. I love you guys and I'll oh boy, I just totally screwed that one up. Alright folks, I'll say it. I've said it oh. She's not afraid of neon, folks. That's because I come from a generation that promoted neon. I come from the generation that actually played music videos on music television. And whenever I saw this, I just fell in love with it. And I hate to say that I bought it at Walmart. <laughs> Sorry, Walmart. Not a sponsor.